Um, I really want you to talk about the ideal guest law, which I, I guess I placed it into the background section of the, um, of the uh, chapter. And uh, really the biggest reason for that was you could have seen it in your chemistry class. Um, I guess high school chemistry class. I don't know how many people taking this class are or have taken chem 30, although you could have, uh, but you know, ideal guest law, you might have seen it in many different contexts. It's, um, uh, it's a fascinating law, how they uh, discovered it. Uh, it was originally discovered by chemists. And the way chemists discovered it, it's a really um, great detective work. And I think you see this more properly introduced in uh, chemistry class as a combination of different gas laws. Because there's a, I don't know where it is, Boyle's law, um, if it's in the textbook, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I talk about this somewhere here. It comes from Boyle's law, Charles law, and there's a, some French name that I'm forgetting. Um, <laughs> but so ideal guest law in chemistry gets introduced that way as a combination of uh, many different, um, not many, three guest laws. Now, the physics uh, treatment that I want you to see, and I want to illustrate with a simulation, is the mis microscopic treatment, or uh, what we sometimes call kinetic theory of gas. I don't know if I use that phrase in this text of kinetic theory of gas. It's um, basically looking at, um, Oh, yeah, <laughs> it comes towards the end of the chapter, you will get to that. Um, so I just want to use a simulation to show you how how that looks like. Um, so I think one of the simulations that will let me do that is uh, a state of matter. Let me do basics just so that I don't get um, lost with all the controls and whatnot. Um, and Really, a guess is the simplest state, and um, uh, I guess I can kind of demonstrate here why it's the simplest state. So this is the microscopic representation of a solid. So I hope everyone knows that everything is made up of atoms, right? Yes, hydrogen, uh, helium, lithium, <laughs> as far as I remember, uh, those are all uh, atoms, examples of atoms. Hydrogen is made up of proton and electron, and helium is made up of two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. Um, no, everyone knows that. Um, but I guess uh, what's important for our purposes here is that when you look at a solid object like this, it's uh, made up of indivisible, very small particles. And that's what this uh, represent illustration of solid is showing. It's showing you those individual microscopic particles, atoms, um, uh, I guess neon atoms, and um, it's uh, somehow bound together with each other. That's how a solid maintains its shape. And, uh, and that's uh, something that makes the solid uh, kind of complicated. Because if I want you to just look at motion of this one neon atom, that's gonna depend on all its neighbors. So, uh, so treating solid from this microscopic fundamental view is pretty complicated, which is one of the reasons I was saying that the relationship between temperature and the thermal energy is complicated. It's not something you can easily derive. Um, we can, you hopefully are also aware of liquids as a phase of matter. And the defining feature of liquid is that it takes the shape of its container. Um, oh, I think we covered the liquids in chapter eight. Let me just double check to be sure. Uh, and, well, unless the fluids, did we talk about states of matter in fluids? Um, we might not have because states of matter will, yeah, okay. So we didn't talk about states of matter because that needed a thermal physics. But using uh, liquids in the uh, chapter eight with the fluid and with the, um, well, with the liquid type of fluid, the defining features, they uh, takes the shape of the container. And liquids are actually just as complicated as solids are. And you can see why. If I were to wanted to follow this one uh, atom of neon, 
then you can, it's constantly interacting with its neighbor. It's always colliding with its neighbor. So tracking this one neon atom in a liquid uh, is a, it's a complicated business. So, um, so we don't do it. Um, oh, I guess I've been talking about neon, but I could have talked about water. Why didn't I do that? Uh, so this is an illustration of ice or solid water. Um, uh, it's supposed to be hexagonal, but I guess uh, in this 2D representation, it's not really. Um, so this is solid. You can see that the relative relationship between neighboring water molecules so stay more or less constant. When it's a liquid, then um, one water molecule can move past to another water molecule, but it's still constantly interacting with another water molecules. So this is why gas is simpler. When uh, something like water or neon is in a gas state, then these atoms or molecules are very far from other atoms and molecules. So you can see these occasional collisions. Um, so <laughs> can I slow this down? I can't. Okay, I can pause. Um, let's say you are tracking this neon atom and just, you know, watch it for about a second or so. Then you can see that well, it took maybe a fraction of a second. Let's look at this neon atom. It seems far enough from some other things. So it takes, okay, it took about a second before that neon atom collided with another neon atom and changed the direction. So we did the gas phase of matter, these um, gas molecules or atoms, they interact uh, very rarely, well, or relatively rarely <laughs> compared to liquid and solid with other molecules. That, that's what makes gases uh, simpler. So that's uh, actually the starting place for what we call ideal gas. With the ideal gas, we ignore all these interactions between atoms and molecules in the gas phase. So here, with the real gas, you see them colliding with each other occasionally and all that. So with the ideal gases, the approximation we make is approximation that these gas molecules don't interact, interact with each other. You can kind of imagine it's going through each other. I mean, here it's not doing that, so it's hard to, but, um, but uh, with ideal gas, we still look at the fact that they are interacting with the walls and that'll give rise to what we call pressure um, or what we call the pressure in chapter eight. So, um, so yeah, it's a, in the ideal gas law, um, so because it's uh, simpler than liquids and solids, we can treat this as a kind of um, a system we can analyze with the tools of physics which is considering things from what we call first principles, from the basic mechanics, from conservation of momentum perspective, from the uh, perspective of conservation of energy, kinetic energy, from the perspective of how uh, momentum change relates to force, impulse, how force relates to pressure, all that. 